Okay, welcome to our second webinar all about what to do after you have signed up onto Mobile Tech Rx. <sighs> so I guess we'll put up this. As always, any pricing discussed during anything with Mobile Tech Rx is only to be used as an example. I am not telling you what to charge. I am not demanding what you charge. I am not telling you how to run your business. It is up to you. So today's webinar is going to be all about what to do after you have signed up for Mobile Tech Rx. I switch my screens around here. So you've been to the website, you've done the sign up. Now anytime you need to get back to your back office portal to fill in your information, you just go back to the website, hit the login. That will take you right to here. You will enter the user email and the password that you set up. From there, it will dump you right into your back office portal into this page here, starting at your company information tab. Here you can add a logo just simply by clicking the add logo. It will take you wherever you need to be on your computer, whatever you have set. If I normally set everything right to my desktop that I want to load, it just makes it easier and more convenient for me. You can add the lo logo. It should be in JPEG format. Here, you can put in the rest of your basic company info. If you need to change the name, make sure you add your website, the email that people can reach you, your phone number. For those of you still in the 20th century, you can even add a fax number, the tax ID number that you would enter here. All of this will be on the top header of your estimates and invoices and any PDF that you do send out. The mailing address, you'll only fill this out if you have a different mailing address than what's your physical shop address. For those of you that are strictly mobile, you'll want the mailing address up there. It'll be the place where everybody mails you your checks. If you have a shop address, you enter it here. When you're all done, click the save changes. You should get a little green box up above. Now you can do this on your phone, your tablet, a laptop, and a desktop. You are not restricted as to what accesses. You just need to open a web browser. Here's where you can also monitor your subscription. You've signed up, you're in the 30 days free. You can add a credit card simply by clicking add a credit card. Back too far. You will not be charged, when you add your card and you are in free trial, you will not be charged until the end of your 30 day free trial. For those of you that are chasing hail, that are only gonna use this during your active season, you can come in here, click the cancel subscription when you're done at the end of your season. Then when you come back in, you will have an opportunity to just click reactivate and then you will be good to go. We do not delete any information that you've ever put in. So everything from your year before will remain. You will want to come in here and set your default company rates. What is here is your default company rates. You can override them in clients when I show you how to put in client information. But here, the labor rate, the labor rate for body, Anything that you add in here, paint materials rate, are going to be set as your default rates. For those of you that do charge sales tax, you can put in your tax rate. You can select whether you're taxing labor only, tax on parts, parts only, any way you move the sliders around. Here you can set a default company hail matrix. 
If you do not do hail, if you're just a strictly route company, you can just ignore that. If you're in the US, make sure that the US currency is selected, uh, Europe, any of the other changes. Make sure you click those save changes. That will pretty much cover the early portion simple. We're going to go into much deeper on the podcast at a later date about each of these other, the precedent, handling the miscellaneous, what batch import and parts program all mean. I will cover all of those in a much more thorough uh, podcast or webinar later on. The invoices and estimates. This is your signature disclosures that are found on the invoices and on the estimates if you choose to have somebody sign. These are just the default that we have put in. If you want to put anything legal, I would encourage you to please talk to an attorney and make sure you know what is legal for your state. To begin adding our users, if you have employees or you're beginning this to run a hailstorm where you're gonna to want to add in subcontractors, you can go here and manage all of those users to add a user, whether they are a subcontractor or a technician, you can come in here, click add new user, select subcontractor or new user. A new user is going to be an employee for your company. Once you uh, click that, click next, you will just be entering their name, their email. We will send them an email and they will need to answer that in order to continue on. In that email, your employee is going to need to set their password. The email will be their username. They set their password. They can download the app straight from their app store, log into it with that email and password. You as the admin are gonna to wanna to come in here, click on that user's name, and then here's where you're gonna set all of their permissions, their pay rates, whether they're active, inactive. If you fired an employee, you can just make them inactive, then they can no longer access your portion of Mobile Tech RX. You can assign them roles. If you are a business partner and the two of you are putting it together, you're gonna to wanna to make them an admin. If you have one key man, you will want to make them an admin. It's entirely up to you. Pay type, you can set per vehicle, the net percent, gross percent. Now, net does take into account invoice discounts. Gross will be the gross amount. Salary, it just will always come up in a zeros. So just setting their percentage. The used company information, this is if your technician is in the same location that you are and you have that technician writing estimates. If they are not, you will uncheck that. If you're a company that has multiple locations and you have employees that manage and run your other location, you will uncheck this then as you fill out the phone number, fax, for somebody stuck in the 20th century, very bizarre, uh, <clears throat> fill out the mailing and shop address and that will be on the header of every estimate that this employee will write. It's the same for subcontractors too. All of this carries over in both subcontracting and into uh, employees. Permissions, each one of these has their own set of rules. You will want to look through and read these. Uh, basic is the most standard. The person can't hardly see anything. Standards goes to next level, doesn't allow some uh, changes. Read all of these thoroughly and make these decisions for your company and for your employees. The Premier allows for the most. Comparative pricing. Now this can be found under any user's name, whether it is enabled or disabled. It is selected per user. And that is because 
There are certain times of the season in which you want an estimator to be able to have comparative pricing to know when those panels are getting upwards of replacement cost. But you don't want them to have that as a year round, nor does your company keep it year round, or maybe only one person in your company you will have keeping it year round. So here's how you can select it per individual user. Clients, you can assign all or assign individual clients. Users, this will allow the you to have two users assign the dollars in the work orders to each other, to whether it's employees, subcontractors. There are certain times in which administrators don't want certain technicians to see things that other technicians do. These permissions allow you to adjust that to your company's needs. We'll assign me all, I trust me. We're gonna go ahead and click changes and it changed. Now, if we want to add a subcontractor, we will just enter their email address here. Pardon me staring at my keyboard, I can't type for crap. So we'll add that user. And apparently we're not going straight back into <laughs> our pages as they're supposed to. We are actively um, working on this back office and there will, there's continuous uh, improvements such as on this, the batch import screen that was not there as of a couple of days ago. So that's why sometimes uh, everything clicks you back or you have to manually click back. It is because those changes and additions are being added to help you run your company. So subcontractors, as soon as you add a subcontractor, you're gonna want to make sure and set those percentages, those pay types, all of their information exactly the same as when they are an employee. So make sure you set all of those on each one, as well as the clients. Now, this particular account, I have no clients. If I had a list of clients, it would show here. The reason for that list of clients and not always having a sign all is during a hail season, you may hire a subcontracted hail technician and you may put them into a body shop, Joe's body shop, whomever. If you assign them only that account, anytime they open up their version of the app where they are attached to you, that will be the only client that they will see. So your key employees, you wanna make sure that if they're running a route, you want them on all of your clients. You need them to see all of them. But on a case where you have subcontracted hail guys, anything like that, you're only gonna want them to see just that one client. It creates two things. One, it shields them from seeing what every other person in the company are doing or what every other client has going in open estimates, but also it makes their life faster. If they don't have to scroll or search for the client that they are writing the estimates for, it's just the only client that shows up on their screen. Adding clients now is no longer just done in the app. So here you can just go ahead and you can start importing your clients list. And you can just manually put them in, put in their email. This is somebody's email address that I use a lot. I certainly hope they don't mind seeing all of those come through on a regular basis. Wholesale and retail. This is an important distinction because as you separate your company running reports that we will cover in a, a much more thorough webinar at a later date, you're gonna wanna be able to sort those. And for those of you that do both retail and wholesale, you wanna be able to run different reports upon wholesale and retail. So make sure that you are categorizing your clients in that format. Add all of their location information here. 
the rates. The rates here in the client, if you set rates here, they will override the overall company rates that you set before. So this is how you can override each of the rates that you have set as your company-wide for a specific client. Pardon me one second. The case where this comes in very important is when you are doing work for body shops and they have different labor rates based upon their uh, insurance agreements, whatever agreements that they have, or if just their labor rate is different than yours. And when you write for that customer, you make sure that you match their labor rate. Here it allows you just to enter that. You can also enter the PDR flat fees. If you're doing a flat fee or a per panel price. So, and this flat fee and per panel price is not just when you're running your routes and you have those set, but say uh, you're a route technician, but one of your dealerships got hit with a hail, you've agreed to fix those cars for X dollars. You can come in here and you can put that in this PDR flat fee. And then when your guys are on the lot and they are working and fixing those cars, then each time they click a car, that fee comes up every single time. And all I have to do is click in the app that they are doing the overall hail or hood or sides, whatever it is that, that you've agreed to. But this allows you to change it per that client for that instant. If there is tax added, if the country that you're in, you can set the default hail matrix for that client currencies and any external notes. So that is how you can add the clients and then you just keep going if you're adding them all in. Now we are um, set if you are a new user and you have literally hundreds or thousands of clients to put in then we can assist that into a batch import. We are making that possible right now, but for the moment, if you contact us through the help at mobiletechrx.com, this one right here, then they can help give you some instructions. They'll ask you to get it loaded into uh, either Excel or a CSV and send it off to us and uh, the tech guys will get that loaded right into your account for you. If you have only, you know, 10 or 12, you're going to want to just quickly throw those in and give those the, the treatment that are needed. After you have all of your clients, it does not matter if you have added those clients here in the back office portal or if you have added them within the app itself. Should you choose to export that client, if you want to do a mass emailer, you can come in here and you can actually, let me bring this, my arrow back up, but you can select whether retail or wholesale. Again, this goes back to why I said you want to make sure and select that retail and wholesale for each of those clients. If you send out a mass emailer regularly to your wholesale accounts, chances are you're going to get hate mail in return. So if you want to send out like sales flyers, emails, anything, if you're using MailChimp or another mail service, you can come in here, you can select your retail only clients. And that will give you a list of only your retails. Obviously I put in one that's wholesale only. So that will give you your retail only. You will come up here and you will click export. Now Safari does it in a drop down up here and then I can just dump it right onto my desktop. If you set up your computer to just dump directly to your desktop, then it will and that file will be there. You can take those, strip out the important information that you need and then upload it from there. If anybody has any questions, feel free to throw them in. Um, from Matt, can I combine and merge wholesale account names in QuickBooks? Uh, example, if I have XYZ in QuickBooks and I have VXYZ in MTRX, how can I combine the two account names into one? Okay, <clears throat> that's uh, 
as far as that goes now i'm i'm not a quickbooks expert i'm not a computer expert i fumbled my way through this and and uh i i make amateur look good but uh as far as that in quickbooks no you cannot merge or combine quickbooks does not allow that you will need to make sure that they are exactly spelled the same spaces caps special characters all of that has to be exactly the same so if you have it one way in quickbooks then you're probably going to need to make sure that it's exactly the same inside of mobile tech rx uh, any deeper onto that and you will need to uh, go into the tech support line and either help help at mobiletechrx.com or 888-626-6750. Can you change the invoice number in the iOS app? Yes, you can. Changing the invoice number. Let me just move this into the share screen real fast. Invoices. Um, obviously this account has no invoice. The invoice number will be right here. This will only show your closed invoice. Click this invoice number and change it. Now you cannot 100% remove the number. So when you first click it, the old default number will still be there. Add your new number and then delete the other digits out of there. All right, any other questions? I think we kind of have it all scored up here. Let me double check here on the Facebook feed. All right, I think we are going to be good. I appreciate everybody tuning in. This is being recorded. I will go ahead and have that added to our Facebook page. And I will also throw it up on our YouTube. So if you haven't liked us, go find us on Facebook at Mobile Tech RX and find us on YouTube at Mobile Tech RX and go ahead and subscribe and follow us. These videos will all be there so you can watch, listen to them at any other time. If anytime you have critiques, criticism, and general hate mail, uh, I'm not, I don't even know where to tell you to send the hate mail, but anything else can be sent to either help at mobiletechrx.com. You can find me, John Rinstrom, on Facebook. Friend me, send me private messages. Heck, I'll even take the hate mail. I don't even care. Uh, I'm a big boy. I'm an adult. I can handle it. We can handle any criticisms. We know there are some bugs. We have some bug fixes coming out, and they will continue over the course of the next month. We are tracking everything down, finding anything that you don't like, anything that you want to add. Anytime you have questions, there's somebody answering our phone. Even if they can't answer it right away, leave a message. Tell us what you need. Give us a call. We'll call you right back. Uh, send it to me on Facebook. If I can't help you, I'm going to send you up to the help guys. So go ahead, ask away, criticize away. Tell us your wants. Tell us your needs. We keep listening. What you do is very important to us. So. Take care. Have a good day. Hope you have a very prosperous 2019. Uh, Matt, in the app, no. If you want to change that invoice number, it must be done in the portal. Has to be done in the portal. So take care, everybody.